Hello and welcome to the Friday, April 21st, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Many organizations are moving away from forcing their users to regularly change their passwords, but this doesn't mean that there aren't organizations that still do and also some compliance regimens that still require you do implement password rotation in your organization. If you do still force users uh, to rotate passwords, and of course one of the pain points is that users forget it, their passwords get expired, and then it often involves like a help desk call to unlock accounts. To help with this particular pain point, Rob today in his diary published a PowerShell script that you can use to proactively warn your users with an email that their password is about to expire. Warning users in time also helps them then hopefully come up with a better password than being sort of confronted with the warning that they must change their password now, which of course then just makes them want to get work started and pick the weakest possible password, passing whatever password policy you have. And Mandiant published an update to its investigation into the compromise of 3CX. This was the voice over IP company that was compromised. And as part of the compromise, its customers received malicious software embedded into its voice over IP client. The interesting part is that the initial infection of 3CX actually derived from another supply chain compromise. Apparently, one user at 3CX downloaded a package known as XTrader, online trading software that is overall legitimate, that was, however, discontinued in 2020 and as of late 2022, still available for download from the original company's website. However, it turns out that the particular version downloaded by this user was itself compromised and then installed a backdoor on the 3CX employees system, which was later used to then affect the software package that was built for 3CX. I think one problem here is that the supply chain compromise apparently are not really detected very easily. The trading platform, like I said, unclear how long it was compromised. And given that the software was no longer maintained, probably also wasn't really monitored that closely for a compromise. And security company Asterix found an interesting vulnerability in the way Google used OAuth. Now, given that uh, Google is a huge uh, supporter of OAuth and a huge user of OAuth, this is a pretty interesting find. The problem here is that a user may give a malicious application permission to basically perform actions using OAuth, but later may be unable to see this application in the application list and may be unable to remove that application again. The way this works is that uh, after the user signed up for the application and gave it permissions to use the Google account of the user, the owner, the malicious owner of the application is initiating a deletion of their Google Cloud Platform project. Now, once you initiate the deletion, you basically, the application will disappear from the user's account, but you may undo the deletion within 30 days. So what an attacker could do is after initiating the deletion, the user no longer sees the malicious application, is no longer able to delete it. But then whenever the attacker wants to use the malicious credentials that they obtained, well, uh, they just basically cancel the deletion process, do whatever they need to do, because at that point, uh, the OAuth credentials are becoming valid again. And of course, as soon as they're done, they initiate the deletion again. And with that, the application is hidden. 
To fix this problem, Google now maintains visibility for applications that are pending deletion in the user's application list. So that way, if you figure out there is a malicious application, well, you are still able to identify it and delete it. And talking about APIs and tokens, uh, PyPy is attempting to shore up some of its publishing systems with what it calls trusted publishers. So far, you need a short long lived API tokens or passwords even in order to authenticate and publish uh, new packages. Well, uh, they're going uh, to offer now also OpenID Connect, uh, which well uses more uh, short lived identity tokens in order uh, to authenticate to PyPy. Looks like an interesting proposal. And let's see if it helps a little bit uh, with some of the problems we're having with various package managers. And in vulnerabilities you should be aware of before the weekend, VMware fixed two vulnerabilities in its area operations for logs product uh, this allows for a pre-authentication code execution. And Fox IT did patch some vulnerabilities in its PDF reader. Well, that is it for today. Thanks again for listening. Next week, I'll be at RSA. Hope to see some of you at our panel that we'll have on Wednesday. If you want to meet up, let me know. I usually carry some ISC stickers with me. So if you see me, just hit me up for some and I hopefully will have enough for everyone. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.